hello there guys i hope you you're well so welcome back to yet another video so today we'll be looking at uh, android's data binding library so to get started make sure that you download you download the starter code uh it, the link is in the description just for, go to it and download the code and open it in android studio so what is data binding so data binding is a it's a library in android uh, that helps us as developers to bind our data to our views yeah so initially we used to do all do all this programmatically inside our activities or fragments but uh since the introduction of the data binding library we can uh, bind our view, uh, data to our views directly inside our xml file so once we start using uh, the data binding library you'll realize that uh, our xml code file contains some code or some logic so this uh it really helps because uh, our activity or our fragment will have less code and uh, we're also going to reduce the find view by id calls uh, which are uh, they have always been slower so our code is going to be uh, cleaner and more precise and uh, because of that we expect that our app in speed as in speed will increase and our general performance will be uh, excellent so uh let's not say much let's just get started so the first step into getting started with Android's data binding library is that you have to make sure it's enabled inside your build or gradle file uh, in your module so i did that you can just open your gradle file and you'll find that i declared and uh, data binding and i enabled it uh, over there so that's the first step and okay if you're using kotlin please make sure that uh your kotlin capped plugin is enabled also so that is the very first step into uh getting started with android's data binding library and number two the second step is to make sure that uh, your layout file is wrapped by a layout tag so what do i mean uh, first of all to get started uh for you to tell your android android that uh, i need data binding to be enabled for this particular activity or fragment then uh, you have to include a, a layout tag as your root tag in your layout file so how can you do this so let's just do that so you can just highlight our main root that's a uh, relative layout and hit alt enter so this for the users uh, of microsoft windows uh, for the mac guys uh i really don't know maybe you can hold uh, hit some control z or something like that i know you guys are familiar with that so uh right after you've done that then you convert to a data binding uh layout so uh, once you do that you'll just notice that uh there's a data tag included and your whole layout is surrounded by a, a layout tag exactly so you could always uh, do that uh like manually you just uh you include this tag manually but uh, i prefer doing it uh, uh, automatically because android studio normally generates your data binding file or your binding file uh, automatically for you all right so let's get back to our uh, activity so once we've, we've done all that we can go ahead and declare our binding file it's right below here And I'm going to call this binding. And the name of the file is uh, activity. Activity main binding. So this file is normally generated automatically by Android. And if it's not uh, generated automatically by Android, you just go ahead and you go to build. You clean projects and then you go ahead and rebuild it. And it will be generated for you automatically. So that's the first step. Again, we can inflate the layout of our activity directly with our bonding file uh, as follows. So instead of, instead of having to use set content view, 
we'll just call the binding file okay then to binding you too and then we call set content view okay let's let, let's import this and the first parameter is the activity are followed by the layout file Yeah, so that's it. So we can just get rid of this line because we are, we don't need it at the moment. Okay, as I have mentioned initially, uh, data binding helps us to uh, get rid of this uh, fan view by ID calls. So the first thing that we're going to remove uh, are these calls to uh, fan view by ID. So we can just get rid of this this line, and we can just call binding. So as you can see, uh, that uh, ha actually helps improve uh, the number of lines. So uh, the next line is add timer. So we're going to remove this also. So this is a button. Now, one thing I would like to do, uh, actually, before I carry on, let's just go to our main activity. Now, inside our data tag, we can uh, declare variables and all sorts of uh, things that we actually want. So I would like us to declare a variable right here. So this is how to declare variables inside your your XML file, and we call this the activity. And the type. Of main activity. Okay, so that's fine. So uh, as for this case, I would like us to remove this uh, the call to find view by ID for the add timer. Now what add timer does is uh, once it's clicked, it calls the add timer method. So let's just go to the add timer method. Add timer. Oh, I can't seem to find it. Okay. Uh, reset timer. Cancel timer. Resume timer. Okay, so one thing I'll do is I'll just... Uh, so here it is. Uh, so I'm going to remove this private modifier. And make it public so coming back here where we go to uh, the add timer button here it is and we'll just ha we'll have to refer the method add timer uh, from our xml file so how do we do this because we can actually call uh, methods directly uh, fr from our xml file okay so this is how we do it so we call them click method and uh, when you are making references in xml especially for variables we use the we start by uh writing the art and then the curly braces and for methods we use uh the parenthesis and that then we call activity at timer so that will actually replace the whole of this So that will replace all this. So at the moment, it seems that we don't actually even need this entire code. So we can just get rid of it. And the variable that was declared on top here, add timer, we can just get rid of it too. So there are errors, we can just go ahead and fix them. Okay. So uh, instead of having to reference uh, from the activity, we can just call the binding file. And call add timer.
so I'm just going to call is enabled and we set it to state okay so that uh, fixed that now uh, we go to the next line and the next line is a reset button so we are just going to do the same same thing that we did for add timer let me just go to our reset timer uh, the function and we get rid of this private modifier and i'm getting rid of this so that uh this uh okay let me just go back and uh return the private modifier Once you you are uh, you make this method private, it won't be visible inside uh, your XML file. So you might actually look for it. So this is the reset timer button. Okay, we can just go ahead and uh, include the onclick method, and we look for for the reset timer method from activity. You won't actually find it there so that is why i actually got rid of the private modifier so we make this public once we do that then we can just call a reset reset timer yeah so that's why i actually get got rid of the modifiers so now that we've already done that we can just get rid of uh, the reset button from our declarations And also, we get rid of all this code. So, guys, I, I know you're starting to see the trend uh, how data binding has really uh, helped uh, this app to reduce code. So, for the errors, we can just go ahead and fix them. Again, here we call binding. We call uh, the button from binding file. And this is reset button, a reset timer. And we can get rid of this line again that uh, worked so the next line concerns our progress bar and our timer text view so for these two i'll just uh leave them first or we can just uh our progress bars and text view let's just get rid of all this We can actually fix this code and make it uh, much more simpler and we get rid of all this so let's go ahead and fix all these errors so okay we can just come here and call binding now if you're using a kotlin there's this uh, method called apply we can just use apply for this moment and call timer text view then we call the text method time left then we call the progress indicator again and set progress to int then we can just get rid of these two lines and we're going to do the same here just going to call binding and call apply so I'm going to copy this and paste it here And we make this gone. So we can get rid of these two lines again. And we have some few errors. 
yeah here we call the binding This is a progress indicator. We can get rid of this line as well. Okay, so finally, here. We call the timer text view. And we set text. And the progress indicator, sorry, let me just copy this. These two. And the progress. And we can get rid of all this. So as you can see that fixed all the errors. So the next line follows. So the floating action button. So what this does is uh, it checks whether the timer is running then it calls stop. Otherwise it uses uh, the time that was already there which means it's, uh, it's paused. To start the timer or it's just uh okay so one way we can do this uh, we can achieve all this because we we need to call our method directly from our xml file and we cannot call uh, this timer method uh, directly from here so what we can do is we can just uh, declare another another method let me just write another method here we are going to make this private it's private already. So start stop timer. And what we're going to do is we are going to call this method from our floating action button right here. that stop okay so what we can do is uh, we get rid of all this code let me just remove all this and I can get rid of this and I can paste that code here yeah so that will help that so that will work so as you can see the only thing that we are left in our uh, activity file is uh, the declaration to the toolbar now one thing I also like us to uh, to to do is to affix we are going to fix the progress bar the progress bar it is we are going to fix this visibility so we want uh, once the uh, the app runs uh once you you click on start then you uh the progress bar uh, becomes visible and once it's uh the user presses stop it becomes invisible so we can achieve all this so we can just call there's a method that we can call uh, but before we do that, we are going to make this, uh, we have to make this a uh, public so that it's actually visible uh, on this file. So uh, one way we can do that is by, uh, let's just go ahead and change uh, the format.
is running variable. So you're going to make this a mutable live data uh, variable. So what that means is that uh, we can actually change and also observe whenever is running changes. So uh, and this variable was initially false. So you don't forget to do this. Make this false. Then we're going to introduce another variable here and we call it uh, underscore is running. And this is of type a uh, live data. So what this means is that it cannot be uh, it cannot be, you cannot set you cannot write to this uh, variable, but you can actually read it. So and its type is it's boolean. So I'm going to uh, change that. Okay. So as you can see, errors have uh, appeared. Let's go and fix them then. So. Okay, so what they're saying here is that uh, is running is no longer a boolean, so we cannot actually use it like a boolean to check if it's running or not. So we'll have to uh, call value from the uh, mutable live data. And we check if it's true, actually. Uh, that, yeah. Then we can uh, proceed to the next error and fix it. And here we have to call uh, dot value again. And here we just call value again. Still an error. Okay. So proceeding. We call value. And check if it's true. Alright, dot value is true. So I realized that uh, I had actually made a mistake somewhere. Let me see. Okay, let me just I'll correct this again. Yeah, so there's a mistake uh, I made. At... Enable reset button. Yeah, this value is not supposed to be true. Uh, I should make. Uh, I should set it to state. Okay, so that should be fixed. Okay, fine. So now that we've done that, we can go back to activity main .xml and set the visibility uh, from right from here. So we can do that. So once uh, the user starts the the timer. We expect that the progress bar uh, to uh, to be visible, so it's initially invisible. So once the uh, the user presses on and start, it we should make this uh, visible. And once uh, the user has actually stopped the timer, then the progress bar will be invisible. So we can just uh, do as follows. We can call activity and call is running, and we check if it's actually true. So if it's true, we call, I uh, will make this view. Okay, so uh, what this means is that this package has not been imported. So we need to import uh, the view package inside our uh, layout file. So we can do this by just uh, inserting an import tag. Then we, uh, we start with Android view. 
yeah that's it so that's how we normally make our import statements in our xml file so you can go back and we can make this so once it's running we can make it visible otherwise then we make it invisible Okay, so this should sort all issues to do with uh, invisibility. So if there's any code that actually uh, makes the progress bar invisible, you should just get rid of it. So let me just uh, look for this code. Here is one. So let's get rid of this. And here is another. Let's just get rid of that. Because our XML file will just do this for us automatically. Okay. Let's just get rid of this again. Okay. So that has solved that. Now I, I would like to... Uh, just remove this variable from here. And let's fix the errors. So we can just uh, call binding again. And we call apply. Then we can just call fab directly from here. Yeah, and we call extend. Then we can set the fab. And we set the icon resource. Alright, so let's just copy this code and paste it down here. So we need to shrink instead of extending. We shrink. And we change these two. To pause. So let's get rid of this. Okay, so that fixed that. So uh, once we go over the app again, we can see that our code has seriously uh, improved. It's we have we have now uh, used fewer lines to achieve something that was you know we had to deal with uh, so many lines, but now we've just uh, we've removed all those lines and we are. Only remaining with a few lines so right now in our activity main if you run this code actually right now it won't work basically because uh, this variable is empty it doesn't have anything uh, inside so we can do that by we can actually uh, initialize this variable uh, we can initialize it here and you can say binding activity is equals to uh, this so we, which means uh, we are just uh, this current activity uh, is a variable uh, is going to be uh, included as a variable inside our binding file. So right now at least uh, our variable is not empty. And then one last line to include is to set uh, the life cycle, the life cycle owner, and we set it to this. So uh, what this does it. Uh, it helps to uh, make changes to our, our layout file. So now once this is done, we can just uh, go ahead and run the project and see uh, the results. I'm going to run.
yeah so the app is uh, working fine as you can see the progress bar is working perfectly and the buttons are also working fine so uh guys as i, I please if you've not subscribed to the channel please make sure you do that uh if you want more videos like this uh make sure you subscribe because that is one thing that you guys are forgetting to do and uh I didn't actually stop to, uh, you know, explain how the uh, the app works because uh, I know that it was pretty uh, obvious and this is a very simple app. And the code is actually self-explanatory. So what it does is once you click on the start button, it starts the timer and you can also stop the timer. You can also reset and add a whole new timer. So uh, it's just a simple app and I know you guys, you can, uh, you can just uh, read the code and understand how the app works. So uh, I just covered the most important uh, section of, uh, of the app and how to go about uh, data binding. So uh, in the next episode, uh, you know what I'm thinking is that we should uh, cover on view models and uh, live data. So we're going to transfer all this code into a view model so that we can actually make uh, the app more, uh, more efficient. Because right now the app has errors. Once you start a timer and you rotate uh, the app, then the timer is just uh, it's cancelled and you, you have to start all over again. And this is because once uh, a configuration change happens to a device, then the whole activity is restarted again. So you can solve all these errors using uh, view models and, and live, um, live data. So guys, if you're not subscribed, uh, subscribe and I catch you in the next episode. Uh, thank you so much.